Okay, this is actually pretty exciting. Uh, this is gonna be a very, very impromptu video. I'm sitting here, like, browsing around as, as you do, and like, look what I came across here. There's a guy here who is selling a Meat ETX LT. This is one of their, like, um, chroma-free scopes. And I've been looking for a new scope for a while, and this looks like a very, very, it's an eight inch, very, very pretty scope. It may be a bit on the heavy side, but, Oh, I'm tempted. <laughs> so tempted. I think I'm gonna give the guy a call. I wanna know if you have any kind of like carrying equipment for it or what kind of accessories he has. He's not far from here, so <laughs> I might have to go and have a look at that. I just got off the phone with the with the guy. He's home now. He's about an hour's drive away. So um, we're gonna take a drive and uh, Go talk to him. Deal's done. I got it. <laughs> Take a look at this. I just, just put it in the trunk. It's a beauty. Eight inch with like dramatic corrections and everything. Got the, the tripod photo over there as well. I am really looking forward to taking this home. Um, there's a few things that, that I'm gonna need to, uh, to add to it. It's still, it's an, it's an older model, it's still running batteries. So I wanna find an, an external power supply so I don't have to go and eat through that many batteries all the time. And um, yeah, I'm gonna, it, it's, it's slightly larger than the one I have. So I'm gonna need a bed off mask, I'm gonna need a dew filter, a dew, dew shield, stuff like that. But um, Sky is clear, so hopefully that's gonna last until tonight. We go out, just you know, play around with it, just get a few observations in, see how uh, see how it goes. Okay, I got the thing home, and I've had a chance to to take a little closer look at it now. And there is a few things. There's first of all, there's a bunch of uh, accessories that is just not there anymore with the scope that came with it originally. But he, like the owner, have had it for many years, haven't really used it. And um, right now, he like the second owner, I'm the third owner of this. But let me just show you. If you remove this, there's a screw over here. If you remove this, the cap that's supposed to cover this up, preventing dust falling into the scope. Well, that's missing. Another thing that's missing um, is, let me just turn this on over here. There's not, nothing here to, to protect it. And that was something I actually had to inspect like very carefully to make sure there was no like scratches or anything, but it all looks like the optics in it is really, really good shape. So when this thing is in storage, like so, and that thing is pointing straight down, it's not really gonna be susceptible to getting like random scratches or bumps like that. So I'm probably just gonna find something with like a cloth with a rubber band sewed into it or something I can just put over to protect it from dust. These dust covers for, for this one up here, luckily they're dirt cheap. If we take a look at the red dot side here and turn that on, you can see absolutely nothing. <laughs> and um, I think it's because these red dot sites, they don't run off the main telescope power. They have their own internal batteries. And my guess is that that battery is probably low. But it should be relatively easy. I have a pen here to fix. And if I just go and hold on, I gotta push, put you guys down. So I should be able to just push on this tray here. And that, there we go, should give me access to the internal battery. Now, unfortunately, I did not have the right battery size for it. Um, it uses some thicker batteries than the one I had. So I'm gonna have to go and, and all that, but I did try out the red dot in a darkened room and you can see a very, very faint light from it. So I'm pretty sure it's working. It's just the battery is flat and I don't have one that fits right now. So I'm gonna have to get that. But there are other things that I'm going to need as well. Let me show you here. See, if we're gonna take a look at the front of the scope here, back there, we can see the main mirror. And what we have here in front is the cover for the secondary mirror. So light comes in here, at the edge, hits the main mirror, hits the secondary mirror, and comes out here at the back. This scope, like as I said, has been in storage for quite some time, so there's a good chance that this secondary mirror here is no longer properly aligned. So I'm gonna have to, to do that, call a collimation. <laughs> there's actually something funny I just want to show you guys. Um, so I'm reading up in the manual here about the collimation process, right? We're reading up on collimation. It says here that 
to check the coloration of your LT series, center a bright star that is overhead or use a hotspot or uh, reflective sunlight light from a chrome car bumper. <laughs> that kind of shows the, um, the telescope's age here <laughs> because I don't know about you, at least around here uh, in, in, in Europe, we don't really make cars with chrome bumpers anymore. <laughs> that kind of went out of, out of fashion like decades ago. We're gonna wait for, for nightfall, hope for clear skies, and uh, then we can go and see if we can get that thing collimated. Oh my god, you can't make this up. So it's finally a clear night. And look at this. I got to my favorite observation spot, and someone has gone ahead and parked a great big cruise lighter right next to my observation spot. <laughs> but not to worry, I did put up the scope. I don't know how well this picks it up on camera, but I did put up put it up the scope. But we're not gonna be able to do anything like super super serious in terms of um of observations tonight. Um we can still do the collimation, so um let's do it. So what you see here is Polaris. I've lined up the scope with it because Polaris almost doesn't move. And we're gonna use that for the collimation. And I've kind of focused in as good as I could here on the camera. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to defocus the star and we will see this form into like a donut shape. Now what we're looking for here with this donut here, maybe a little bigger, there's about good. Manual says about 10% of the, of the screen, that should be about there. The hole in the middle is actually that mirror, the secondary mirror that we saw earlier. We've seen the shadow of that. And if the mirror is perfectly collimated or perfectly aligned, that donut should be completely even. And it's pretty close, I think. It might be slightly thinner on the right side than on the left. Yeah, I think it is. It seems like it is slightly thinner. Okay, that means that the that the mirror here is slightly off um, off center. So what we're going to do next is we're going to identify which side of the scope it is that it's misaligned to. So I can, oops, without touching it, I can put my fingers in front of the scope here and you can see them here. And I'm going to find that it looks like there. That looks like the thinnest spot on the ring, there where my fingers are now. So that's the side that we need. So I'm just going to go and look, see what screw that was. Okay, so I need to know what screw it is. So the next thing we do is we move, oh, that's the other way. We move the image in such a way that the thinnest part of the ring is towards the edge of, uh, of our image. So that moves out there. And now I can go ahead and get some tools and I can make tiny adjustments to that um, to that secondary mirror and then hopefully that should be uh, aligning that up again ah uh, that's as good as it's gonna get okay so with that we have it um aligned but just because we're not gonna do deep sky stuff tonight that does not mean that we're not gonna be looking at something i just managed to capture this quick video of uh, of jupiter and if i adjust the sensitivity a little bit we should also be able to catch some of the galilean moons